1789, Martin Klaproth discovered a new element, which he named uranium, after the Greek god Oranos. This element displayed an interesting property. It emitted an invisible sort of energy. This energy was described as radiation. More than 223 years later, the results of this discovery are still in use and still affecting humans to this day. This property of radioactivity is readily detectable with a simple handheld Geiger counter. Uranium is definitely powerful. Uranium is chemical element 92. This is because it contains 92 protons. It also contains well over 100 neutrons. 146 neutrons is a very common number. Whenever the, the number of neutrons is changed, an isotope is created. There are at least 27 isotopes of uranium that have been either detected or theorized. Typically, only three of them serve any major importance to humanity. Uranium-238, 235, and 233. Natural uranium is composed of three major elements, uranium-238, uranium-235, and to a lesser degree, uranium-234. The percentages are very skewed. Uranium-238 comprises 99 plus percent of the natural uranium. Uranium-235 makes up just seven-tenths of one percent. And uranium-234 exists in only 55 one-thousandths of one percent. When uranium is used in nuclear reactors, it has been enriched. This process takes uranium-238, the natural occurring version of uranium, with its very tiny concentrations of uranium-235, and chemically, electrically, or otherwise, decreases some of the uranium-238 while not affecting the uranium-235. The result of this is a slightly higher uranium-235 content, ever so slightly. Fuel grade uranium is usually 3 to perhaps 8 percent uranium 235. Natural uranium comes in many different types and many different shapes. To understand more about natural radiation, it's important to buy yourself a decent book like this guy right here, The Introduction to Radioactive Minerals by Robert Loff, Ph.D. Some rocks, like this dinosaur bone, can, take, can contain small amounts of uranium inside of them. This is detectable with a simple Geiger counter. Other samples, like this kind of guy right here, this came from a uh, from the Moab mine in Utah contain a slightly higher amount. The majority of this radiation comes from alpha radiation, alpha decay. The alpha decay is basically the helium nucleus of uh, two protons and two neutrons being ejected by the uranium atoms. This can be simply blocked with the plastic cover over your Geiger counter. Now we're only picking up beta and gamma. There is a difference. Much more active pieces can be obtained as well. 
Again, this piece is from Moab. Mine in Utah. Much more colorful, much more beautiful specimens exist too, such as this autonite from Spokane, Washington. In the dark, this glows if it's exposed to ultraviolet light. The shinier piece that you saw earlier is also a piece of natural uranium. And so are the other pieces like it. Uranium is also naturally occurring in granite, such as this piece of a granite countertop. There's too much activity here to see, but when the Geiger counter is placed over it, it actually will show its radioactivity. The radioactivity in the granite countertop is very slight, difficult to bring out, but it is definitely there. Uranium also exists on our soil as well. It's naturally occurring can be found throughout the soil of most of the world in tiny concentrations that are reasonably harmless. Uranium has been used by people for many years. For example, the check source on this 1960s vintage Geiger counter. We can test to see if the Geiger counter is working by using the operational check source on the side. This unit is working. As dangerous as uranium can be, it can also be very beautiful. For example, this piece of uranium glassware. Uranium has been used for thousands of years as a colorant. In its oxidized states, it can produce many different rich, vibrant colors, such as red, green, orange, yellow, and more. The greenish color in this glass comes from the uranium. There are many different types of products that have been colored by uranium over the years. Everything from porcelain teeth to bathroom tiles. This is an assortment of uranium glassware. These were very popular in the 1930s, 40s, 50s. They were called depression glassware because they were commonly given out as freebies during the Great Depression. People would purchase a product in order to get one of these. It would often be stuffed in the box with the product. Soap, oatmeal, you name it. And of course, this is a piece of Vaseline glass. A little bit different. Opinions as to how radioactive these are. Opinions as to how dangerous these are vary. But one thing is for certain. They are definitely radioactive. Uranium exists in our daily lives, and there's very little that can be done about it, at least in its natural form. There has been a lot of scientific studies and debates to determine the actual dangers posed by radioactivity. One thing is known for sure. Radioactivity is at least as deadly, if not more so, chemically than radioactively. Uranium contains many trace elements that decay from uranium. Here are a list of some of the things that decay from uranium. Lead, a very heavy inductile metal, shares similar properties to uranium. 
fact the two look very similar to one another. This piece of lead is quite dangerous. It is carcinogenic. It's mutagenic. Very, very deadly for humans to touch. Notice I'm wearing the glove. In the same way, uranium possesses these heavy metal properties, lingering in your body and causing cancerous effects regardless of its radiation. For that, for that reason, it is encouraged that you do not eat or drink off of pieces of glassware like this. They are very beautiful and can probably remain in your home relatively safely if kept away from people, children, pets. But eating off of them is probably a very bad idea, as the uranium can leach out. Small samples of uranium are not horribly dangerous. A piece like this, for example, is very, very low in radioactivity and can be examined and looked at. But it should remain in a plastic bag because it will release small amounts of radon gas, which is a known carcinogen and accounts for a significant amount of lung cancer cases in the, in the world today. Uranium exists inside of many things. For example, it may be inside of your kitchen, kitchen tiles, your kitchen countertops, or your bathrooms, your porcelain. Locked away like this, it's not a very much concern. The human body on average has a few atoms of uranium in it at any given time anyway. Large amounts, however, can be a cause for a, a concern. It's present in our soil, therefore it's present in our food as well in small amounts. I must stress that these small natural amounts here are microscopic. Parts per million level or less. They pose very little, if any, significant health concern. When uranium is in a concentrated form like this, it does pose some concern. Inhalation of these particles, ingestion of them, getting them inside of your body really, can be very hazardous. This has been known to science for quite some time. And of course, if nothing more, they are radioactive. This has been Tom from anti-proton.com Thank you for watching.